The naive Bayes classifier is a very simple statistical learning technique that leverages the relationship of Bayes' theorem to perform a classification task that is otherwise difficult to simply estimate. When there is lots of evidence available from different, different features of data, then you can make an estimate here of what the likelihood of the event is interested, uh, of interest is. Again, this is our posterior, this is our likelihood, this is our prior, and this is our evidence. The naive Bayes classifier was one of the very first successful classifiers that could detect, for example, whether or not a piece of mail was spam versus legitimate. So it was actually one of the very original spam busting algorithms that was deployed in the, net and the internet in the early days. Now we have much more sophisticated algorithms, but the naive Bayes classifier still does a decent job. And the way it works in general is that you want to, for example, A would be, right, the probability, if we we're talking about the spam example, the probability that a piece of mail is spam. And B here would be the evidence that we obtain, right? And the evidence could be all sorts of things. It could be, you know, the text of the email. It could be where it comes from. It could be uh, the time of day it came from. It could be the length. Oops. Of the email. It could be the presence or absence or the presence of certain words. in the email. Or it could just be all of the different words. The most classic version of this is simply a collection of all of the words that are present in the, right, so this is text, all words. The most, the most classic version of this simply looked at just that. I right? didn't do any of this stuff just took all of the words that were in there and treated every word totally independently. One of the key features of the naive base classifier is that it assumes every piece of evidence that you're using is fully independent. If, you're, if your evidence is not independent, then that can cause problems for the accuracy of the classifier. That's called a model mismatch. But the naive base classifier fundamentally assumes that all of the different uh, pieces of evidence, the different features, the dimensions in the features, in this case, every word that's present, is independent. That may or may not be true, but that's what the assumption of this, of this classifier does. So that's our evidence B. And so now let's take a look at what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're saying, well, what is the probability? We're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this. What's the probability that we got that evidence Right, so the probability of this piece of mail is spam, given the, the evidence we got, right, the text, the words in the text, is equal to the probability that we got this piece of evidence conditioned on this being a piece of spam. Would we get these words if, what's the likelihood of us, what's the probability of us getting those, those words together, seeing those words in this email, conditioned on the fact that this, we're assuming this is either a piece of spam or conditioned on the fact that it's not a piece of spam. That would be the probability that this piece of mail is not spam, right? So if A is the probability that, it's, that it is spam, then if this, since this is just a binary classification, then not A, right, the inverse of A, opposite of A, would be the probability this piece of mail is not spam. And thus, that's equal to the probability that we see this piece of evidence conditioned on the assumption that it is not 
right? Not A, not a piece of spam. Then we multiply this by the prior, which is the probability that any piece of arbitrary mail that comes in is spam. And so your prior might be very, very high because in most mail systems, the bulk of mail that goes through is just spam. So this number, right, the probability that that's, yeah, your mail is spam could be very high initially for A, and the probability that it's not A could be extremely low. What does this mean? This means that it helps push the system to, in general, classify things as spam because if for a thousand pieces of email that come in, if 998 of them are spam and only two of them are really legitimate, then your prior, right, knowing nothing else other than a piece of email has come in, you want to just assume that, you know, your, your, your chances of, of, of that being spam is extremely high. And so your prior, right, your, your non-evidence driven probability of this thing being spam is already very high. And so you need to have overwhelming evidence in order to convince you that it is not spam. Right, this number, the probability of seeing those words conditioned on, um, conditioned on this being spam needs to be extremely small to counteract something with a large bias. And that's, that's exactly what these distributions are designed to do. And then you divide everything by the probability of seeing that slice of evidence. Now, for classification tasks, this is not something that you tend to worry about very much. Because even though technically that will give you the actual probability here, what you are really doing in an IE based classifier, at least in this two version example, is pairing this probability with the opposite probability, the probability of the other term. All right, so let's draw a line here. You're comparing it to the probability that it's not spam given that we saw this piece of evidence and that's equal to the probability of B conditioned on not A times the probability of not A divided by the probability of B. Well, this is great because if this is the probability that a piece of mail is not spam given our evidence and this is the probability that it is spam given our evidence, well look, we're dividing by the probability of B in both cases, let's not even bother because we don't want to think about that. That's just the term that is the same in both, so we can just get rid of it. Wonderful. Now we just have these two terms, the probability of B conditioned on A and the probability of A or the probability of A naught. Now, in the case that the probability of the events is the same, guess what? Then this term and this term would be the same and you could cancel these out as well. When would this occur? This would occur in the case where if in a thousand emails, half of them are legit and half of them are spam, the probability or priors, right? The probability that any arbitrary piece of mail is spam is half and the probability that any arbitrary piece of mail is not spam is also half. And thus these two probabilities, these priors would be equal and you can cancel them out of your calculation. For the spam example, you cannot do that because we just said in a thousand emails, 998 of them are going to be spam. Thus, these probabilities need to be kept so that you can, you can properly account for that. Other examples may have an equal distribution of events for A and not A or all the different, different type of events that A could be. And thus, in those cases, you can cancel this out. But it's not a given. You have to be very careful about what, what this prior is telling you. Let's again label our terms just so we know. This is posterior. I'll do this in some green here. So this is the posterior. This is our evidence. This is our prior. And this is our likelihood. And so now we're tasked, right? So it's obvious that we can calculate these, these probabilities for our priors. They're easy, right? Because you just look at all of the different mails you get and you know for some training set whether or not they're spam or not. You just count those probabilities and thus you have your priors, no problem. Now we have to think about how do they get this likelihood? This is now the, the challenge to model. 
what is the probability of seeing a particular evidence distribution that we just saw conditioned on the fact that we are assuming that this is spam? Or what is the probability of seeing this probability distribution conditioned on the fact that it is not spam? And that is not something that you can calculate explicitly. However, it is something that can be modeled. And we can model it because we have prior data telling us. So in order to build and execute an IE-based classifier, you need a training set. You need prior data and examples with which to build this likelihood estimate. You need to be able to take some training set, label some of them as spam, some of them as not spam, manually, someone has to do this. And then if you are looking for evidence, and your evidence is going to be this text and all of the words in the text, then you need to go in and find the probabilities that any given word showed up in spam versus not spam emails. And you need to have a dictionary, a table of all the different probabilities for all the different words when they are spam versus not spam. And so if you had, for example, you were building this model, if you had the word, um, for example, offer, right, or money, then these terms, right, or opportunity, or virus, or hack, right? These are often terms that are usually in, if they're in an email, then, you know, or, or you know, other terms, what other terms, like moneygram, right? These terms are more often associated with spam emails than not. Thus, the probability of seeing a word like this conditioned on it being spam is higher for virus hack and offer than it would be for not spam, just as examples. Further, because the naive base classifier treats everything, all the features, all the words in this case, since these are our features, as independent, you can separately multiply the probabilities for every single one of these words independently because you're not modeling any correlation between them. That is often a limitation because if an email has the word hack in it, it probably also has the word virus in it. Or if it has the word offer in it, it probably also has the word money in it. And if these terms are present together, that could probably even strengthen right, your, your ability to determine whether or not this is a piece of spam or not. But that's not within the scope of this classifier. The classifier doesn't do this. The naive base classifier simply assumes that each of the features are independent and thus will independently look at the probability of the, whatever words are in the, the email and look up in its table, look up in its model, what the probability of seeing that word is conditioned on looking up in the, in the spam table versus the non-spam table and give you that probability as an output. And then you do that for all the different words that are in the email and you have a string of multiplications, one for every single word and that, if you look it up from the probability of the, of the spam table, of the spam, uh, spam train table, gives you some probability. And if you look it up for the table of words that are in the non-spam category, it gives you a different probability of uh, multiplicative property. And then you multiply those by the prior, and whichever of these two are higher, you then classify that piece of email as spam or not spam accordingly. It's actually a very clever and simple idea but it requires being able to build these likelihood estimates. And that requires previous training data. But that's really all that's going on. That's the process of a naive base classifier. It simply looks at prior examples, builds up some likelihood, builds some prior, and for all the different conditions that A can take on, in this case, it's only two because it's spam versus not spam, it will estimate what the probability of that at event occurring given the evidence that it has seen, the same evidence in all cases, right? We're using the same evidence in the, in, to evaluate whether or not a piece of email, a piece of email, because that's what we're evaluating, right? The, the email is, whether it 
is spam or not spam. And so we're smashing it through the different likelihood models for some given evidence to see whether or not this conditional probability or this conditional probability is going to be higher. And if you have three different possible outcomes of A, right, if it's, if it's a decision you're making, whether you have to go forward, left, or right, then you have three different likelihood tables you have to look up or three different likelihood models you have to consult and you end up with three different probabilities and you take the highest of those and that's what the classifier would classify. That's all that's going on in IA based classifier. Very simple, but also extremely powerful because if you can get this likelihood model correct, if you model your evidence correctly against the different conditions, then it can be extremely accurate. Assuming that there is a difference of abilities in across the event conditions. What does this mean? In, in, when would a naive based classifier fail for this example? If a, a naive based classifier would fail, if spam and real emails used the same words, right? If the same words were used for both spam and not spam emails in exactly the same frequencies and all of that kind of stuff, then this decoder, this classifier wouldn't work at all. It would not be able to tell the difference between spam and not spam because that's all it's using to come up with these, these likelihood estimates. But mercifully, right, what, can, what is very salient, what's very important in determining whether a piece of email is spam or not is the actual words that are used. And thus, the likelihood of seeing a particular set of words when something is spam are going to be very different than the likelihood of seeing those same words if that, if that email is not spam. And this is how uh, a naive based classifier works. This is how the earliest spam detectors worked by simply pulling out these models with all of the different emails that had previously been banked, labeling them manually and building these banks of likelihood estimates.